This franchise is so cursed. Well, the hits just keep on rolling for the Washington football team. Welcome, everybody. My name is Greg Sykes. I am the host here at Washington Football Maniacs channel. So if you are new here, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing and giving this video a like if you like it. And with that said, let's get into today's video. So the hits just keep on rolling. First of all, we thought we got some bit of good news for Logan Thomas uh, a few days ago. Of course, Logan suffered a knee injury against the Las Vegas Raiders, which we all thought was kind of a cheap shot to his knee. But um, the preliminary reports revealed that there was no tear with the ACL, that Logan Thomas actually kind of escaped all of that and would just, you know, basically be put on the shelf for the rest of this season as a precaution. Well, it turns out after a second look at it, yes, indeed, Logan Thomas has torn his ACL, which means, uh, well, as most of you people probably know, he's going to be out for 12 to 14 months at least. It takes a good solid year to recover from an ACL. So you're basically looking at 2022 for Logan Thomas being put on the shelf that entire season. It's likely going to happen. So no Logan Thomas next year, which means the Washington football team is going to have to look for another tight end, a primary tight end next year who can have as much impact as what Logan Thomas has. It's just an unfortunate thing. We, I mean, I, I am hoping that Logan Thomas can get back, um, get healthy quicker. But, you know, right now that's just the case. What can we say? Logan Thomas did, in fact, tear his ACL, and he's going to be out for probably a good solid year, maybe a little bit longer before he's fully 100%. Well, now, I will say that, I mean, of course you've seen – You've seen players come back from ACL tears quicker, but they're not necessarily 100%. 12 to 14 months, I'm talking about, you know, being 100% healthy. Logan is going to miss time next year. I am saying that he's probably going to miss the entire season because it's so late in this season. It's going to take time. I would say if he plays at all, it's, it's going to be very late next season. So I would not doubt if we put him on the shelf the entire season next year. Uh, so it's unfortunate. You know, we've, we've had so many of our players tear their ACLs, and I've never seen so many players in my life in the past several years tear their ACLs. I, I don't know what the issue is. You know, maybe they need to redesign the, the padding around the knees, um, they need to come up with something because these players are tearing their ACLs like crazy. And it's really causing, for some players, it could cause a career ending injury. So, very unfortunate for Logan Thomas. I wish him a speedy recovery. And the even bigger news this week, of course, being that... We just can't escape the, the virus list. Now, Jonathan Allen has been put on the uh, the COVID list for this week. Likely, probably, probably likely going to miss the game against uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. But if that's not even worse, uh, the fact that he's not the only one, there's four more players that's been added to that list as well, a lot of defensive players. And the defense was, as you know, the very thin heading into the Dallas game. Jonathan Allen is like the man, the captain of this team right now, the defense. And to lose him for a very important game against the Philadelphia Eagles, ugh. hits just keep rolling, folks. The hits just keep rolling. 
Now, of course, a lot of fans on Twitter are blaming this guy, Montez Sweat, as you all know, got tested positive for COVID last week and had to miss the Dallas game. You know, Montez, of course, was one of the players on the team who was very apprehensive about uh, taking the vaccine, basically decided he did not want to take it, was in the best interest for him, uh, and eventually he did get COVID, which means that, you know, he's out for a little bit longer is what I understand than someone who tested positive who was vaccinated. So, yeah, Logan, uh, I'm sorry, not Logan, Montez Sweat, um, a lot of fans are blaming him, saying he's going in and he is infecting all of the rest of the team and he's he's single-handedly killing the Washington football team. I think we need to pump our brakes a little bit on this. I mean, you don't know that it all came from Montez. And the fact that, for one thing, um, Jonathan Allen was vaccinated and still got it. So that tells you, folks, that you can do all you can and you can still get it. Now, the the upside to all this is when you're vaccinated and you do get it, it's not as bad on you. You know, you're not likely to, you know, be put in the hospital or anything like that. Having said all that, yeah, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, a lot of fans right now are very upset with Montez Sweat calling for the team to trade him and all this. I think that's ridiculous for one thing. Right now, he is your best defensive end, and we need Montez Sweat badly on this defense. We need him to be able to play in that Eagles game because if we're not going to have Jonathan Allen, we need somebody back. And, um, you know, regardless of what side you're on in this whole virus thing, uh, you, <clears throat> you know, it's unfortunate, but we have to, to push through it, right? So we do need Montez Sweat back. My hoping is with uh, Jonathan Allen being vaccinated, Maybe he'll have a couple of uh, negative tests prior to Sunday and we'll be able to play him. Keeping my fingers crossed on that. And because we need Jonathan Allen, we need Montez Sweat. You, we need as many healthy guys on that team as we possibly can. So it's very unfortunate. I, I really, you know, it just... It feels like things are starting to crumble just when it looked like we were riding a high. All of a sudden, Dallas comes in and kicks our hind in, and then just everything else starts to crumble after that. It is so, it's almost like a bipolar type of thing. You know, you have the fans riding a high coming in here, um, the team gets beaten, all of a sudden, the fans are all like on, you know, uh, well, <laughs> just got to. Check in on the fans' well-being at this point. That's all I'm going to say. Um, the other thing I want to speak on is Taylor Heineke. Now, Taylor had a very bad game against the Cowboys. In fact, Taylor reverted back to his gunslinger, I've got to make every play be the play uh, thing. And, you know, he was doing such a good job of finally calming down and playing a more balanced, patient game, and we were winning football games because of it. And you could see that certainly Taylor Heineke was pressing in the game. Uh, a lot of that is because, you know, one of the scores, one of the Dallas scores come uh, came from Taylor Heineke fumbling as, you know, sack fumble, they picked it up, they scored. Heineke probably blamed a lot of that on, on himself. And so, you know, the team being down um, at that point, what, 18 to nothing, and then eventually 24 to nothing, Heineke definitely would start depressing because he's not been in that situation a lot to where, you know, they're behind and he's going to be the one to bring them back. So Heineke definitely pressed a lot. He did not play his best game. And it does start to give you a little bit of pause as far as, you know, can Taylor Heineke lead this team? He can lead this team when they're up. You know, he can win some football games if this team is leading. You know, I mean, we have no problem with that. 
Where it starts to come into an issue is when your team is behind, you need a leader who can rally the team, who can keep the team patient and say, we're going to we're gonna come back on this. Don't worry about it. And right now, Taylor Heineke didn't show that he was that guy Sunday. And I feel bipolar because I keep going back and forth on Taylor Heineke. At one minute, I feel like, why not? He, he can be the guy. And then the next minute, I'm like, eh, I don't know. And, uh, you know, so... Are we going to roll with Kyle Allen? I mean, Allen came in and played well. He helped to, to lead the team back. He, he made some some great passes. And, you know, that this is probably the biggest difference between Kyle Allen and Taylor Heineke, the fact that Kyle Allen came in and, of course, he, he's going to be fresher. He hasn't played all season, but he looked like he had a much stronger arm than what Taylor Heineke had. A lot of these passes that Taylor Heineke threw down the field were badly underthrown passes. The pass that basically got Terry McLaurin hurt was badly underthrown. Uh, you know, McLaurin almost came down with catch, but had Taylor Heineke had a stronger arm, that probably would have been a touchdown. And so, yeah. Heineke does not have the strongest of arms, and eventually that probably will catch up with you in the NFL. Uh, you know, so I do believe that the Washington football team will continue to look for their franchise quarterback. I'm not sure if Taylor Heineke is going to be the stop stopgap guy. I think you still go back and you consider Ryan Fitzpatrick if he is healthy next year. I think you still consider him as the starter if we even if we do draft a guy because you know in all likelihood we don't want to have to start somebody rookie season throw them into the fire unless we desperately have to. So it's going to be some some interesting things happening in the next few weeks. Uh, buckle up, guys. This is going to be a bumpy ride, a bumpy ending to this season. You know, we were all riding high. We still do have the last spot in the playoffs. So if Washington just basically keeps on winning out, I mean, they still control their own destiny. So that's the thing that we have right now. Got to keep hope, you know, until Washington loses another game. You know, I mean, we're still in a good position to get into the playoffs. So, that being said, what do you think, guys? Is this team, is this franchise cursed? Maybe that's a rhetorical question because I think I know what the answer is. 